all right, whatever, I'm doing it. I'm making a Webflow versus Framer video. You already know I'm biased and I'm gonna tell you to use Webflow, but you might be interested to hear why I think so, how I'm able to avoid the Framer FOMO, how I think Webflow can make you more money, actually how it got me out of my mom's basement and into my own place, and then also just kind of what I think about Framer because I got to play around with it the other day. Hey there, Web Bay. For this comparison video, we'll start with the user interface and developer experience. After that, we'll talk about the CMS or content management system. Then we'll have a look at using custom code in both of these platforms to extend your development and extend your websites. Then we'll talk about documentation and how you can learn these things. And next we'll look at pricing and compare those. And then we'll finally give you the verdict, but you already know what that is. All right, when you fire up Webflow for the first time, it's definitely a bit confusing and there's just a lot going on here. Now, the place to start is over here on the left. We have the Webflow icon, and this is kind of like a bunch of settings. It's like a file menu for designer, as we're calling it. This is called designer that we're in. And then you can add stuff by clicking this plus sign. There's all your pages right here. Here's the navigator where your page structure will be. We'll talk about this later. We can start building with components. We have variables here where we can define our colors and text types and spacings and things like that. We have styles next, we have our assets, we have our CMS, and then you can forget about logic, you can forget about users, you can forget about e-commerce, and then we have apps and stuff down here. And that's only the left side that I've talked about now. The thing with Webflow is that over time you will get experienced and you'll understand how to use all this stuff and you'll realize that you're not using all of it all the time. It's kind of like Photoshop, just completely overwhelming at first, but then you kind of figure out where the things you need exist and that's where you make your home. Now over here in the styles panel, this might look very similar to something like Figma, but it's actually quite a bit different as well. So you can see we have like our units here we can set and we can set maybe 60 pixels and we can even change the type of unit that we're using. So really granular control on the values that we're adding to our website over here. There's also settings and this is kind of like the HTML settings of stuff and they get even more complicated when you're working with forms or images or something like that and then interactions for animations. And then finally up here, we have our responsive breakpoints. So that's a quick intro to the Webflow UI. It's a bit complicated and there's just a lot going on. The only place where we don't have buttons is down here on the bottom. And as the website gets bigger, it actually does show a tree view of the navigator. So it does get bigger. On the other hand, does feel quite a bit cleaner. We have like less clutter up here at the top. We even have text along with our icons, which makes, in my personal opinion, this much more beginner friendly. We have our layers and assets over here and everything's feeling very much like Figma. If I click on home, now let's say I want to add a page, sorry, not a page up there, let's go to this insert. They also have a plus button and they have this pre-built landing page that looks pretty good and pretty cool. And if I start selecting on stuff over here, I have a similar style panel to what we saw in Webflow. However, it feels a lot more like Figma. Everything is much more simplified. We can see that I can you know, set the width to a thousand pixels instead of 800. And right now it's fixed, but I can also make it relative and that makes this percent. And so I can dial that up and down. So it's good we have that, but we don't have all of the CSS units over here in the style panel. But you can see we have some layouts. So stack and grid, they're getting further from the CSS. Webflow we saw was really close. We saw flex and grid, and obviously there's grid here, but there's also stack. So stack is kind of like probably Framer's solution for Flexbox, but they're calling it different stuff. They're abstracting away a lot of the code that we would normally see if we were standard web developers. Now, scrolling through, you can see that definitely this is another complex UI that will take some learning, but if you're already familiar with Figma, then Framer is probably the way to go for you here. Now, back in Webflow, I can add some custom layouts too. If we click the plus icon and go over to layouts here, we can see that they have a custom nav bar that's there. And then I can also drag in a hero section, and what else do I want to get? Like a feature section. Where's features? They have team, but I want to see features. Here we go. Features, sure, why not? There should be like a logo garden. I just learned that the other day that you can call these things logo gardens. I always just call them like um, scrolling logos or whatever. Ooh, I like this. I like the numbers. Anyway, so you see that's how we've started our Webflow website. And now anytime I start, I go up to the body tag here and I come over to style and it already has a body class because I added some pixel values here. But normally I would just remove this and go to body all pages. And now you're gonna wanna start selecting your font. So let's say I want like this uh, author variable as my font and I want to you know, set the default font size. We'll use one rem here, which is equal to 16 pixels actually. And pretty cool in Webflow, we can use rem. In Framer, you cannot. So that's a big plus for Webflow in my opinion, much more accessible website. And you can see that simply by putting on the body all pages, a size of 16 rem, I've completely jacked up my entire design. And if I change that over here too, we see that everything's kind of expanding just because this text is getting bigger because it's using the body class here and it's selecting everything with that size. So if I take this back down to one rem, 
then we can see all our layouts are good again. And actually there's a CSS preview that's, where is that? It's right here. Yeah, this is such a cool feature to start learning stuff uh, with Webflow. But what I have to do is select the actual item and then it's gonna start telling me what the CSS and the code is behind that. So now inspecting stuff, if I want to actually change out this image, I can just press the gear and choose an image from my asset library. So I have this cool astronaut over here. And then this can be very much drag and drop and plug and play like, this is an astronaut right here, you know? So if you're just looking for a standard website with drag and drop and kind of live changes and updates, then that all exists in Webflow for sure. And then we have our features images over here. I can choose a nice little spicy pepper. I would choose another nice little spicy pepper. We're not going for any design awards here. We're just kind of showing off how this thing works. And you'll notice that in Webflow, as I've made these things, we get feature lists here. They have classes already attached to it. And if I look at feature list over in the navigator, so that's feature list, it's part of a section here. But if we come down here, we see feature block two, feature block two, feature block two. What's cool about Webflow here is now I can change the bottom margin on this, this is called, and so set this to 16. And then it changes on everything with that features block to class applied to it. Now working in Framer is pretty similar. Let's select, this is an image element here, and now we can choose an image. This is looking so much like Figma. And I'm gonna come to my downloads folder and check out, I don't know, let's bring in one of these fighters. Sure, this guy looks kind of cool. And so there we have it. We've brought in an image and we can say um, fighter game. So it feels very similar to Webflow and we're editing stuff here. We don't see a class name up here though. So that's very important. Framer is really abstracting that away from us. So I can just start making changes here and it's affecting across the breakpoints. But let's go ahead and see. So these kind of look the same, right? So let's go ahead and we'll add an image here, another fighter. And we'll add another fighter right here. And now when I change this one here, it doesn't change this one down here. They're not sharing the same class. So I can just kind of make changes and this might be really good for you, especially if you're starting out, you don't want to get confused with changing something in one place and then having it change on another page or in another location on the same page, which is a common pitfall that I see a lot of beginner Webflow developers get into. So developer experience, really good on both of these. However, for larger sites, Webflow is going to serve you a lot better by writing better CSS. And it's going to get you deeper into the code and knowing how HTML and CSS and web development works, if that's what you want to do. If you want to be in Framer and you want to make one page and you want to make it look amazing and you want to do it quickly, then I think this is a great user experience for that. So your developer experience really depends on what you want. So I can't answer that for you, but as you know, I've already told you the verdict is Webflow. Now, I actually took a look at both landing pages for Webflow and Framer, and they both essentially sell you everything and tell you you can build a rocket ship with their tool. So Webflow says, build with the power of code without writing any. I love this headline because it's very attractive and it makes you think that you could use Webflow really soon. But as we already noticed, Webflow is pretty hard. And in my very first client project, I had to write code from the start. So I've never had a client project where I didn't write any code. So this is a little, you know, it's bending the truth a little bit. You can definitely get some really cool stuff in Webflow without writing any code, like no, no question about it. However, I think that over time, you're going to be writing some more code because people need to integrate with other platforms because people want very custom functionality that it's really hard to offer in a native website builder. Now, scrolling on through, we can see we have really nice animations. That's great. Creative power that goes beyond templates. So this is just scrolling through and telling you can style how you want, create animations, content rich pages. They're selling their CMS, go live quickly. So just selling you on all their stuff. And then here's some case studies from different customers. A platform designed for growth. So they're selling their apps here that they're talking about, collaboration. And we're gonna see very similar things on Framer. They are noticeably talking about SEO here in Webflow in that a lot of marketing teams are using Webflow. So I think they're selling to that user. Framer's tagline is the internet is your canvas. So, and where teams design and publish stunning sites. So they're really selling this idea of creating a beautiful website or really selling to designers here. So we come down here, it looks very similar to Webflow. We can design, we can collaborate, we can publish. We've got CMS and we can localize to our audiences. So CMS looks good. Let's come on down. We've got some logos of who's using it. And let's see, they're talking about layout. They're talking effects. They're talking about navigation. They're not talking about SEO and it doesn't feel like it's speaking to a marketing team. It feels like it's speaking more to a designer or a team of designers or somebody looking to get a portfolio going. With that in mind, I think one of the biggest differentiators between Webflow and Framer is the CMS. So the CMS is accessed by clicking on this little disc icon here. And you can see, I already have some stuff set up. These are just images of people. So here's Marlo, you get a name, you get different fields, an image, and Webflow has CMS templates already for us. So we can click this little plus icon up here 
And you can see we have templates like blogs, authors, categories, projects, clients, songs. You know, something that's really great about Webflow that Framer doesn't have is categories and reference fields in CMS. So if I click on categories here, we can see, let's just go ahead and create that collection. And then I can add 10 items. And they're going to be this really gibberish Latin that I hate, but that's what we get. And then we'll click this, add another CMS template again, click on blog posts. And let, we can see that actually it's, it's populating the field. So we get our rich text, which is our post body. We get a summary, we get an image, we get a thumbnail image, we get a switch to say whether it's featured and a color associated with it. So let's go ahead and create that. And then what I want to do actually is go back into the gear icon and let's add a category as a reference field. And we can select it from the categories right here. So we can save that file or save that field and click save collection. And now we'll go ahead and add five items. And we can see that in 10 great examples of responsive websites, you know, down here in the category, it's referencing that category CMS that we created. So this is really powerful for SEO and for building scalable sites with large content systems, you know, more than 500 blog posts, whatever, Webflow can handle that with ease. Now let's check out Framer CMS. You can see I've already created a blog CMS. And if I click in here, it looks very similar. It actually looks quite nice. Um, and we have rich text as well, but it's this rich text is a little bit more limited than what we got in Webflow. Something I use a lot in Webflow that Framer does not have is code embeds within the rich text. So we can see there's a code thing right here, but this is just like for writing stuff that looks like code. Um, it's not actually gonna execute the code in here. Now in Webflow, I'm often using custom embeds to maybe put in something like a TikTok video or just embed any sort of random thing into my CMS. I can also use it to target stuff with my JavaScript on the client side. So really powerful in Webflow that we have that available. A quick idea for what I mean there is if I just click this plus button, the same icon, so this little code icon, now gives me a full script editor and embed. So this is super cool. I can write my own CSS in here. I can write my own scripts in here, JavaScript. I can do anything. Um, I just really like this feature. And it really makes the CMS in Webflow extensible, which I've had to use for multiple enterprise clients. So for me, it's pretty clear. The Webflow CMS gives it a huge leg up for marketing teams and people SEO minded, people who are trying to make money from their websites or trying to sell a product from their websites. Now, I think Framer CMS is great for getting started and great for a single person just pumping out blog posts. Um, but for an enterprise team, it's kind of the Fisher Price version of CMS. For customizing our website with code, Webflow gives us a lot of options. First, we have a rich plugin ecosystem. So things like FinSuite Attributes or JetBoost, they use the custom attributes on HTML right here. So data, hello, value, that would go right here. And this is gonna add an HTML attribute on the published version of your site that then JavaScript can target and run. So you don't have to muck around with IDs, which there should only be one ID, one unique ID on a page. And you also don't have to worry about changing classes. So your CSS selector is really the attribute value for a lot of these third-party libraries. Also with code, each page gets its own little code settings block. We have a head for each page and we have a body. So you can write all the JavaScript you want in here or CSS as well. And then even we have global code too. So if we come into the site settings and then we head down to custom code, then we get the head tag and the body tag here for all of our sites. The custom code embed that I was talking about in the CMS can also be used. Actually, let me command K and look for an embed just like this can also be used on a static page too. So there's so many places that you can inject your own code on Webflow and customize the experience yourself. A framer's a little more limited in this department. Now it does have a way to insert a code embed. That would be down here in utility. We have, where is it, where is it? Right here. So we have the option to include a URL or even write HTML in here in this tiny little box, uh, which feels a little bit too small for me based on the HTML and CSS I tend to write in my sites, but hey, it's there, so that's cool. And then we also have code overrides. It's pretty interesting. We can select a file and if I actually select a button in here, so just like that, and I come down to code overrides, we can customize stuff pretty extensively in Framer, but we're using React instead of JavaScript here. So if I go to with hover and then I click edit code, we can see this is all of the React, which is using TypeScript code in here. So you can actually do some pretty cool customizations. However, we also can't really pass prop. What that means is that you might have to duplicate something like with, with hover. And if you want to do a pink hover and a purple hover and all that stuff using the custom code section here, then you'd have to make multiple variants of it. Um, so just, they said they're working on it. We'll see what Framer has in store for that. But it's pretty cool, you know, for me personally, Webflow gets me closer to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which is the fundamental for all web development. React is used all over the place too. So there's definitely no harm in learning React. 
but I think that JavaScript is a better place to get started if you're beginning. Now, if you are already really familiar with React and you wanna build a beautiful website and you like this idea that you can customize the components, then Framer is a great option. Some other things that just aren't really available in Framer are custom forms. So if I come into utility, actually, if I come to forms, we can see we have integrations with HubSpot, FormSpark, Intercom, Calendly, and the personal input is just like an email. Like you can't add field, different fields, you can't do radios, you can't do anything there. And you have to tie it into a service. So we have some services here. So Framer doesn't offer you like a way to receive form data yourself. You have to use a third party service here, which is just kind of unfortunate and, and annoying in my opinion. Now, when I finally escaped my mom's basement when I was 32, I was using Webflow, but I was also using Unity and just trying to teach myself code in general. So I was really interested in development and Webflow just offered the easiest way for me to onboard at that time. Framer still wasn't available then. But what really got me into Webflow and probably made me stick with it was Webflow University itself. And I just can't say enough good things for Webflow University. Quality of instruction and the level of in instruction and the amount of content that's here. You can just learn everything by going to Webflow University. You don't have to even watch any of my YouTube videos. It's all right here. So, and it's funny, it's really good. So I just can't recommend it enough. Framer University is top notch as well, but in my opinion, lacks the polish that Webflow University has. So you can see we've got get free course and see resources, but there's just not as much here as what Webflow offers. Webflow has courses on HTML and CSS fundamentals. They have like build your own portfolio, just, just so much practical and really useful advice for stuff that would even take you beyond Webflow. For Framer, I thought that it was too targeted to like really niche things. It's kind of like watching my own YouTube. I like to show like really niche animations and things like that. But Framer felt more like, you know, using a specific tool and doing a specific certain thing that you probably don't want to do. So in my opinion, like Webflow University is just what kept me on the platform in the first place and why I love Webflow so much. As far as pricing goes, the two Webflow and Framer are pretty similar. I really like that Framer offers this mini plan as well as add-ons. Like if you have more bandwidth or you need CMS upgrades or different things like that. If Webflow had this, I would, I would really like that. But they're both pretty much the same. They have site plans and then they have team plans or workspace plans as they call them, different pricing. And they're, they're very similar. So I don't think really you can call one or the other unless you're going for this mini plan or you need those add-ons. I do know that both of their pricing plans are quite complex. And a lot of times I have to walk my clients through what they actually need and how to decipher what's going on on all these pricing pages. So you can see we have general and e-commerce workspace plans, in-house teams, freelancers and agencies. Actually, one thing I really like about Webflow is that I have a freelancer, or I think I have an agency plan, is that I can use a free guest access in client workspaces. So rather than like changing projects out to each other, it's really easy for somebody to just shoot me an invite, I hop into their account, and they don't have to pay any extra since I'm already on a agency workplace plan. So I just really like that feature. They announced it, I think, a year or two ago, and it's been awesome ever since. Anyways, that wraps it up. I think you already know I love Webflow. I think it's super capable. I think Framer is very interesting and fun. And if you just want to build a website as a designer, then it's a great place to get started. But if you're a marketing team or you're serious about your website or you just want to even learn HTML and CSS and JavaScript, but you find that a little bit intimidating at first, then go with Webflow. All right, see you in the next one.